When Pokemon Base Set rolled around, it came with four Steam decks that were introductories to the game. I remember many of us bought those when we were kids, but I don't recall anyone really playing them. I know for a fact most of us took the cards out of them and used them to make our own decks or to write them off our checklist of what we were missing. I've always been curious on what the potential of these decks were, if any. Were they just Steam decks made for some simple gameplay, or was there something amazing to them that went undernoticed? The second Steam deck to appear in base set was Overgrowth. Take over the game by evolving your grass and water Pokemon to maximum toughness with the Overgrowth deck. Okay. Nice little list of cards here. The goal of the Overgrowth deck is to beat your opponent with highly evolved Pokemon. To support that team, this version of the deck adds Venusaur, a stage 2 Pokemon, and another Ivysaur and a Gyarados, both stage 1 Pokemon. It also adds a Pokemon Breeder to help you play your large Pokemon more quickly. Since we've taken out more water Pokemon than grass Pokemon, we've changed the energy card mix a bit as well. Energy cards, we have 16 grass energy cards and 12 water energy cards making this a grass focused deck. So of the water Pokemon, since that's the minority, we have four Staryus, three Starmies, two Magikarp, and the hollow of the deck, a Gyarados. Oh, look at that Gyarados. Look at the scuffness of the Gyarados. Pray for this Gyarados. Arceus has forgotten it. And for the grass side, we have four Bulbasaurs, two Ivysaurs, four Weedles, two Kakunas, and a Beedrill. The trainers of this deck are Gustawin, two Bills, two Switches, a Potion, and two Super Potions, so more on the healing side if anything. Taking a closer look at the water Pokemon, we have the Staryu, 40 HP, 1 energy card for slap, 20 damage, pretty straightforward. We have Starmie, 60 HP, 2 water energy cards for cover, discard 1 energy card attached to Starmie in order to use its attack. Remove damage counters from Starmie, so it's a healing method. And second attack, Star Freeze, three energy cards, two colorless, one water, flip a coin, it heads if any Pokemon is now paralyzed, so it's a paralyzation. Three energy cards for 20 damage and a paralyze on a sec on a one stage one Pokemon. I'm not sure if that's a great idea. By great idea, I don't mean I'll think it's worth investing in. Got Magikarp, 30 HP, one colorless energy card for tackle, 10 damage. One water energy card for flail, does 10 damage times the number of damage counters on Magikarp times 10. So, wow, 30 HP. That means you're doing a max of 20 damage if uh, you can survive a following attack after that. So not really that great, but you got Gyarados, which is really huge, 100 HP. Three water energy cards, Dragon Rage 50 damage, four water energy cards, Bubble Beam, Flip a Coin, Defending Pokemon is now paralyzed, 40 damage. So that's pretty big HP attack wise. And for grass side, we have Bulbasaur, 40 HP, Leech Seed attack to Grass Energies. Unless all damage from this attack is prevented, you may remove one damage counter from Bulbasaur for 20 damage. So a, kind of a minor heal and damage. Ivysaur, 60 HP. Three energy cards, two colors, one grass for Vine Whip, 30 damage. Three energy cards, all grass for Poison Powder. Defending Pokemon is now Poison, so automatic Poison, 20 damage. You got the Weedles, 40 HP, one grass energy card for Poison Sting. Flip a coin, if that's if anyone's not paralyzed, 10 damage. So, paralyzed, as I mentioned in other videos, it does 10 damage at the end of turn and 10 damage at the end of their turn. Then we have Kakuna, a stage 1 Pokemon, 80 HP, first attack stiffen, uses two colors energy cards, flip a coin, it pets prevent all damage done to Kakuna during your opponent's next turn. Any other effects of attack still happen, so it just prevents damage. Second attack, poison powder, two grass energy cards, flip a coin, if that's if any Pokemon's not poisoned, 20 damage. So, it continues having poison, and then Beedrill, the stage 2 evolution, 80 HP, same amount of HP, that's depressing, so you'd think it'd be more. First attack, twin needle attack, flip two coins, this attack does 30 damage to number of heads, so potentially 60 damage for the cost of 3 colorless energy cards, and then poison sting, 3 grass energy cards, flip a coin, if heads if any Pokemon is now poisoned for 40 damage. The goal of overgrowth deck is to beat your opponent with highly evolved Pokemon, highly evolved Pokemon, okay. So we have Gyarados, Starmie, Beedrill, and I guess you can count Kakuna if you want, and Ivysaur. So you have a lot of evolutions here, and a lot of basic Pokemon. Well, looks like Overgrowth is doing quite a few things. There's a lot of heal potential here with the Pokemon and the trainers. Gyarados and Beedrill are definitely the powerhouses, so you want to power them up as much as possible. So you're most likely going to put Staryu and Starmie up front as your active Pokemon, as well as Bulbasaur, and perhaps Weedle, or at least half the Weedles you would get. The goal overgrowth is to beat your opponent with highly evolved Pokemon. Highly, okay, I guess. 
Laying them out in this order, I just noticed these all have an evolution. Staryu has an evolution, Bubbles evolution, Weedle, Magikarp, all of them have an evolution. So I guess it checks that idea off of beating your opponent with highly evolved Pokemon. So for changing up the deck, they have remove two water energy cards, three Staryu, three Starmies. So you're completely getting rid of the Staryu family. That's unfortunate for them, but nothing of much loss occurs there. Adding two Grass Energies, Ivysaur, Venusaur, two Magikarps, a Gyarados, and a Pokemon Breeder. So that's going really heavy down that road. So that addition does change this up quite a lot, actually. Look at that Venusaur. Look how scuffed that Venusaur is. Can you see it? Can you see all those creases right there? Just crease, crease, crease. Staircase the creases right there. It's a base set too, Venusaur as well. I don't know what that's doing there. And the Gyarados. Look at this poor Gyarados, little creases right there. Oh, pray to Arceus, please. Since I actually play these decks, I use scuffed versions of them. I don't use the mint versions of these cards to play. But now, this is an interesting dynamic because it does switch up the deck quite a bit. So it still has the same healing factor going on with the potions, but that's about it. Instead, you have another Gyarados and a Venusaur. So Venusaur's Pokemon Power Energy Trance lets you move Grass Energy cards attached to a Pokemon to another one of your Pokemon. That's not very useful for Gyarados because both Gyarados only use Water Energy cards. So you don't use Grass Energy cards or even Colors in any kind of way unless you want to retreat it. So what you're going to end up doing is powering up the Magikarps to get Gyarados out on their own without any support of a Venusaur. But Venusaur is going to be able to support Kakuna and Beedrill. And finally, something really useful, Pokemon Breeder. It's a shame to add another Pokemon Breeder. I honestly would have just left it at two Ivysaurs, not three Ivysaurs, and just add a second Pokemon Breeder. Just so Venus are going to Pokemon Breeder and Beedrill can have Pokemon Breeder. Let's take a, and take a look back here to support that scene. This version of the deck adds Venusaur, stage 2 Pokemon, and another Ivysaur and Gyarados, both stage 1 Pokemon. It also adds Pokemon Breeder to help you pay your large Pokemon quicklier. Since we've taken out... Okay, so... This continues the idea or the theme of having highly evolved Pokemon to fight because now you have Venusaur out there, another Gyarados, and Pokemon Breeder to bring Venusaur out faster. So out of the box, Overgrowth does have more healing potential with the Starmies, and every Pokemon has an evolved form. But with the changes, you add the Venusaur and next to Gyarados, you have a much more stronger Pokemon rather than having Pokemon that are more focused on healing themselves. That does make a lot of sense why it's called Overgrowth, because in the inclusion of Venusaur and Gyarados, Pokemon Breeder, and the removal of Starmie and Staryu, it does give you that feel of big Pokemon, because Gyarados is huge and Venusaur is pretty huge too.